Well, I think I've delayed this enough. Hopefully, um, some people join in before things get too exciting. But anyway, the long and short of it is, I decided with a thousand subscribers now tuned to my channel, whether they actually watch anything or not, um, I want to just do something I hadn't done in a while, which is a scary game. Uh, I haven't played one in a good long while, and uh, like I said in the video, my brother apparently was quite terrified of this game. And um, I'm not really... I never watched anyone on YouTube play it, which is a good thing, because then I would be spoiled on it, but I thought I'd give it a shot, and... Um, Although I don't normally do this kind of thing, I thought I would uh, thought I would add a little extra dynamic to the mix, which I am going to enable in three, two, one. Hello, everybody. <laughs> oh, hey, Nuku's hosting me. Awesome. All right. So, normal. I, I don't normally do any face game kind of thing, just because it, it doesn't serve my content in any way. But I figure if we're doing a scary game, and it might actually be worthwhile. Um, who knows? Anyway, so what I know about this game, called Colat, by the way. What's going on? Um, it is based on a pretty famous incident in the Ural Mountains bunch of um, hikers and research students uh, were going up the uh, were hiking up the mountain um, doing some kind of uh, investigation or experiment I don't really remember but um, it's known as the Dyatlov Pass incident and uh, it's pretty famous for the fact that nobody can really figure out what happened although there are a lot of theories that um, are referenced in the intro it's just it's very confusing because a lot of the theories do not it cannot be confirmed and tend to bring up um, more questions than they answer. But, um, of course, there will always be supernatural explanations for everything, and that's just kind of what this game explores. Um, so it, it takes some liberties with the stories, I'm sure. But it's also narrated by Sean Bean, so I'm sure they're going to figure out a way to kill him by the end. And that's about it. Let's say we get started then. All right, let's hope we don't run into that problem again. So I reset my router. I plugged my plugged my Ethernet cable into a different port. We'll see if that solves anything. Xfinity makes the worst routers in the world, by the way. They're fucking terrible, and I need to get a new one. All right, well, the biggest problem with doing that is, unfortunately, this means since I had to restart the stream, it's going to cut the video into two different ones. It's going to make it more annoying trying to put it on YouTube. Alright, um... So... I realize most of that intro probably got cut off, but unfortunately that's just the way it is. Um... So the long and short of it is, yeah, these um, students at the Ural Polytechnic Institute went up this mountain to do some things, and um... Let me sit a little closer to the mic, make sure we reduce the echo. Um, went to do some kind of study or something, and just very mysterious circumstances surrounding their death. The fact that their tent was shredded and buried, um, all the students uh, left the tent with virtually no clothes on. Some of them were found dead with weird um, physical conditions, such as one having a fractured skull, another having orange... Uh, tint to his skin, and it's all just rather weird. A lot of explanations uh, tried to explain it, and in my opinion, the most likely explanation is simply it was an avalanche. That's in my um, rather layman's understanding of how these things work, but it makes sense because their tent kind of got buried, so. It would make sense that they were trying to get out in a hurry. They probably shredded the tent trying to um, escape from it. They ran in a panic because they didn't know what was happening. Maybe they knew it was an avalanche and they were just scared shitless and they tried to get away. Yeah, it is a, quite a nice looking game. I mean, everything's just saturated in white, so it's not hard to do. 
And you can use snow to explain away bad texture quality, but it does look very nice. Um, yeah, so what probably happened is their tent started to get buried by an initial avalanche. They were um, concerned about a follow-up uh, secondary avalanche, so they tried to escape. They ran away. That would explain why two of them tried to climb a tree, because they were just trying to avoid getting buried. And... Um, the fractured skull, maybe he injured himself on the way out? Or perhaps he was... It was a post-mortem injury by some wild animal. Alright, we got nine people watching, look at that. Alright, so I don't know if there's any value in exploring. I think this is one of those kind of, um... Walking simulator type horror games, in a way. Uh, you're just running around looking for clues and making sure you don't die. Now, I realize it would probably make more sense to play a horror game in the dark, but the um, the face cam thing wouldn't work in that regard. Actually, I don't know if I could change some of the exposure settings to compensate for that, but I don't feel like trying. Either way, playing in the dark doesn't usually make it any more frightening for me. I am going to turn up my headphones, though. Guess we'll just follow the pass. So, of course, the smartest thing to do, I suppose, is to investigate why a bunch of students died in the middle of winter by going up the mountain in the middle of winter. And probably getting ourselves killed in the exact same way. Oh, that is spooky as hell. That sound, it sounds like a fluttering or something. I honestly have no idea what to expect and if we're being hunted by anything. We can sprint though. It seems to me that it's going to be a short sprint bar. God, his breathing just sounds horrible. Ooh, 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 I do not like that. Are you coming to me? Who are you? Oh, there's bare footprints. I to believe that they endured in the snow after all these years. Oh, I do not like this. Why was this my bright idea? Oh, shit. Ooh! Is that supposed to happen? That's very morbid. What am I supposed to be doing? Can't see anything. I hear some jingle bells. I guess I'll follow those. Oh. Oh shit, it's a tent. Press E. I am right behind you. I don't like the sound of that.
Hard to believe all this stuff would be here in pristine condition after all these years. Don't run all the time, let your character rest. Yeah, that's good. Good to know. Ooh. This is getting to me already. That's not a good sign. Wow, Act 2 already? How many acts are in this game? Well, he's gotten very existential all of a sudden. Um, I have heard nothing. Jenny's just been answering random questions on the forums. Press F1 for survival info. Running in deep snow is tiring. Rest in the camp and set a goal for a safe route. Focus with right mouse button. Oh, shit. Using the flashlight makes you more visible, which means we are going to be stalked by something, as it seems. Help with the map and compass. Barely accessible rocky notches may lead to interesting places and shortcuts. Alright. Well... Oh, 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 what is that? Looks like a radio tower or something. Ooh, that depth of field is ridiculous. Looks like a flare over there. The thing is, it is not unbearably dark yet. But I think there are some interior segments that get really bad. Oh god, that ambience. What is this, a thing? Ooh, we got runes. I set out the moment I heard about the incident. I was in the area, so I reported to the unit myself to be automatically assigned to the case. I arrived at Vishai on... February the 19th, a couple of days before the Institute's rescue group. While waiting for them, I started asking around to see if anyone from among the locals knew anything about the incident. One of them said he had a hunting cabin in the search for the human and knew the area very well. I decided to use him as a guide. When the rescue team had finally arrived, I explained to them what the unit's role was in this mission, and that all discoveries or observations should be brought to my attention before anyone else's. We established priorities, checked the equipment, and set off right away. It was not until February the 26th we found the tent that I believe belonged to the students. Initial findings show that the people in the tent cut its side wall, and for some reason tried to escape from it in panic. The tracks in the snow led to a forest a kilometer and a half away. But the trail went cold after 500 meters, and we had to carefully search the entire area. This was not a place of any average incident. We had shivers crawling all over our bodies because of the atmosphere surrounding us. I was convinced that something more than just an accident had occurred here. I had the feeling we were dealing with something unnatural. Of course you are. Oh! I will be having none of this, thank you. What the fuck? Oh shit. There's some ghostly looking people running off in different directions. God help me. Oh, what's that up there? I don't really 
actually know where I should be going, to be honest. Oh, good. It doesn't pause. Um... I mean, so far it hasn't really given me any immediate directive. I know I'm just looking for clues, but... God, to that end, I am fairly aimless. Guess we'll head up this way. I'm just... I'm just worried that something's gonna end up following me and I'm not aware of it. Oh, it's getting blue. I don't know what that means. So far, all I see is a lot of rocks. A lot of wind. No, please don't. You spelled that wrong. Very reassuring. Oh god, cave. Go look for clues in here. Oh, the snow is just like a screen effect, I think. Just noticed that. That's kind of bogus. Thought something was following me. Oh, bridge. Hmm. There's a radio tower. It's closer than I thought, but... Curious about that. That's much more unusual looking up there. Oh, that depth of field is ridiculous. I don't I don't want that happening. Just turn it off. It's making the zoom almost completely useless. Yeah, I mean, I understand why it's there. It's for that whole cinematic appeal, but... It does not contribute anything worthwhile gameplay-wise. In my opinion, motion blur is just a way to... disguise bad frame rate. So it's completely unnecessary in a game running at, like, 60 FPS. 
In horror games, they do tend to use it to try and add an element of tension to it. Like, a, to a realistic degree, because, you know, if you're running around, looking around like mad, you're going to be blinded for every moment that you turn your head, so... Kind of makes sense. Right, well, I don't see any way to get there from here. This whole area seems kind of useless. I, mean, I could probably climb down the cliff face into that little valley, but I don't really dare try. This investigation won't get very far if I break my ankle. Film grain, yeah. I mean, that's another very common, common trope used in very bad horror games. Alright, well, we accomplished nothing there. I don't know if you're, if anything really comes after you outdoors. Because the one moment my brother described to me, he was talking about, uh, he, he was exploring like a cave or something. And without even realizing anything was following him, it had him cornered. Now this looks a lot like uh, the cliffs you can climb in Risen. But I don't know if there's a jump key. No way to jump. Alright then, I guess I'm wrong about that. Now, does the moon go down at all? I don't think it does. But it almost seems like it's getting darker. I don't know if that's just because I'm in the shadow of the mountain. Ooh. Apart from the fact that the snow is just a screen effect, the um, weather effects are actually very good. I never played uh, Vanishing of Ethan Carter. I heard it's really good, though. Dear Esther was just that kind of like artsy fartsy nonsense. You know, that was like the dawn of the walking simulators. It was an interesting experiment, if nothing else. I actually, I remember I did a, I tried to do a video on it. I sat down, recorded for an hour and a half, did a video only to realize, oh, that's not reassuring. I did a video for like an hour and a half only to realize that um, I never cleared enough hard drive space to make the video. And I just felt like doing it all over again would have been a waste because it's one of those games you, you can experience it more than once but it's never as good as the first time. I thought that was just crackling snow, but it's happening too much. We got another page. Mysterious lights above the Svobodny Cosmodrome. Serious events in the sky were noted the 4th or 5th of July. Right over the sphere which has crossed the sky, the city several times moving chaotically and immediately changing its direction of flight. Finally it stopped and disappeared. Impossible for any flying object we know of to move like that. We got aliens, brothers. Yeah. I don't know if the text scales with, um... With resolution. Oh. Whispering coming from the old ruined church. That's that's not a good sign. Oh god. That thing gonna kill me. Oh my goodness.
What the fuck? Are you friendly? Oh, you disappeared. Great. I... Like I said, I don't know much about this game, but I am fairly certain that those apparitions will try to kill me at some point. I can see a lot of landmarks, but they don't make it easy to reach them. I don't even know if it's possible to reach most of them. I'm gonna head this way. I figure this will take us closer to the church. Holy sweet fucking Jesus! What on earth is that? Fuck me, I'm out. That thing following me? I am not going that way, fuck that, no, hell no. Oh shit! Okay, what do I do? <laughs> I don't know how easy it is to ev evade those things. Hell, there's a bunch of them. Oh, screw that then, I'm not going this way. He can hug himself. They can hug each other, there's a bunch of them. I'm worried they may just pop up without warning. Oh, good lord. This is ominous. Whoa, the filter went away. Oh, that's kind of weird. Don't do that. Don't make those sounds. What does that mean? 61 north, 32 east. Can I actually look at coordinates on the map? I don't think so. God, that filter! <laughs> Surprised I made it through QA. Oh, well, this cave sucks. Uh, what was that? 61 North? Let me write that down or something. On my phone.
61 north, 32 east. Just in case that becomes important. Oh, I thought the game froze, but I just got stuck on the environment. Any of you, have any of you played this game? I realize I never asked. This would be a bad place for a monster. There are quite a few people who played it. I don't think anyone that famous played it, which is probably why it didn't get a whole lot of attention, but... Oh... Well, it doesn't really... It doesn't really take much to get under my skin, apparently. Right, I think we just wrap back around. Ah, okay. This was that, um, bit earlier that I thought I could climb. Well, oh, shit, do I want to brave that again? I really don't. <laughs> I don't know if there are any... Any survival conditions. I set out the no, I don't need to hear that. Like, I don't know... If, like, spending too long out in the cold can kill you? Or anything like that? God only knows why we're doing this at night anyway. Oh, bollocks. I want to try a different direction that hopefully does not have nasty killing demons walking all over the place. I, I mean... Part of what scares me is just, I don't know if I die, how far will I get set back. And I also have no idea how easy it is to escape from those things. There were, like, at least three of them just kind of patrolling the place over there, so... Wasn't exactly all that eager to try and sneak past them. Yeah. I'll probably be doing Dark Souls later, and then... I do want to try and get through New Game Plus on Dark Souls 2 before Dark Souls 3 comes out. I have not actually played... I've never even started uh, New Game Plus on Dark Souls 2, I don't think. So I'm curious what kind of changes it makes. Uh, do we want to go towards the um, ominous orange dome thing over there? Can we, can we, like, wait until daytime? The, uh, survival thing made it seem like... Or, like, one of the tutorial tips made it seem like you kind of have to use the camp as a hub. And, like, periodically rest there. I'm not really sure how frequently you need to do that. I'm not even really sure where the camp is anymore. Ah, oh, there it is.
And some ski poles. Oh. Um, I beat the DLCs, but I did not 100% them. I think I skipped the optional bosses. I think I saved that. 61 North, 32 East. Nope, going the wrong way. 61 North. 32 East. What is that? So was that just the coordinates of the area I was in, or what? I mean, it takes a long time to beat the Souls games. Alright, well, we'll figure that out later. I want to see what's up with this dome thing. Big old spooky glowy dome. dome. Okay, so you can zoom in on the map. Good to know. Does this dome show up on the map? That's dead center. That's that little stone circle. That's our camp. I'm assuming this is the dome. I think we might need to go east before we can reach it. That radio tower show up on this? Overall, I don't think this map is quite as big as it looks at first glance, but... wind come down all of a sudden. Uh, some kind of rift through the rocks there. Yeah, well. Oh, I heard a crow. Good to know I'm not the only living thing around here. <laughs> oh man. Alright, see you around. Thanks for joining as much as you could. Those awful sounds. Oak cave. Oh dear. That is not a happy sound. Or sir, whispers. Fuck me, they're really trying to scare me off of this place. Could you repeat that in English?
Fuck me. Jesus Christ. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> the textures loading scared me. I don't think I can go through here. God help me, it is dark. It seems like the way out of something, not into something. Oh, can't say I'm disappointed <laughs> that I can't go in there. Oh, heavens above. <clears throat> Been a lot of tension, not a whole lot of uh, substance so far. I'm not really sure which I would prefer, to be honest. Damn, really can't criticize their sound department. Oh, jeez. Saw this tree start flapping in the breeze. I thought it was like a wolf getting up or something. Time I get near something, I get scared off too much to actually look at it, so I'm not really making a very interesting video here. Why, why, why? Now I just. What the fuck, mate? It really scares me just by the l lag on loading things. I feel like they're really just starting to throw waves into it just for the hell of it now, though. God damn it. There's noises coming from everywhere. I'm not really sure what anything is. <sighs> this is too much. There's a page. You can hear it. Guards Confession. 72-year-old Anna N. after years of silence decided to talk about events from her past. 
want people to know what harm had been done in all this in the name of science. It was a special chamber. They never allowed us to even get close. It was guarded by soldiers. Although I did see that people were taken there and not many came back, I kept in touch with one of them. I asked what they had been doing there and why so few came back out of there alive. Anna, have you ever seen nothingness? A deep emptiness with no end. I was there. I stood above the collapsed valley of the universe. On the border between reality and unreality. There is an abyss there. A gigantic well with no bottom. A dark cave of hell. And I felt it. It was drilling in my head. Like a ticking clock. It looked at me from below. It was sneaking up on me and slowly started entering me. The darkness. Some time later the same prisoner gave me a letter to pass on in which he had begged for help. I was supposed to give it to the press and expose the whole thing, but the letter disappeared. Up until now I don't know what happened to it. Anyway, they would probably cover up the whole thing. Ah, uh, there's always experiments. Man toying with things he should never, ever mess with. Oh shit. Assuming that's where we are now. Oh. Oh, God, help me. Another page. God, it's getting dark again. We are sitting in room number twenty three. Although sitting might not be the right word because we are running around trying to finish up packing anything else we could need uh, food cans, tools, essentially whatever we get our hands on. We want to be sure that we took everything we could possibly need. We're running out of time. Damn it, where did I put my belt? I'm sure we forgot about something. We're almost ready. We lost the knife. We're counting the money. We're leaving the room in a complete mess. So, we made it to the train station. We're singing all the songs we know and making up new ones as well. Everyone is so excited. Finally, at around 3 a.m., we go to bed. I wonder awaiting us when we get there what will we see how far will we make it i hear the rest of the group breathing peacefully and it's snowing outside well, i'm assuming that was left by one of the students oh good lord holy shit mate Oh, that's not good. Poonji pits. Oh, what the fuck is this? Oh! 
Fuck me. Oh god. Oh, please don't hurt me. What? Do I even care? God, it's like every time I get near something, one of those things pops up. I don't know how I'm really supposed to make any progress here. Well, I have no idea where I am. When the wind stops, that seems to be a bad sign. When everything gets dark. a.m. We're finally here. We met a group of Mansi people. They have weird tools. I think they're for hunting. We've also encountered local hospitality when we were not allowed to enter the railway station because we were singing too loud. But we received a very warm welcome from the local school. We had a bit of time, so we met with the students and told them about our expedition. When we reached another station, some drunk accused us of stealing his wallet. Police got involved, but luckily, after some explanations, the whole thing got sorted out. We spent the whole night in the train speaking about love, religion, politics. When we felt tired, we went to bed, but since the compartments were not closed, we decided to keep watch and switched every couple of hours. There are moments when I doubt whether we are ready for such an expedition. Oh, that matters.
72 north, 64 east. Alright, so we're right here. Which I think means there's really... Oh! Fuck, 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 fuck! What'd I do? Shit, 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 shit! <sighs> oh god, I thought I was safe there. Oh. Oh shit. Oh shit. What? How the hell do I get up there? Fuck. What? <sighs> Son of a bitch. Uh, I guess we're done with that. Oh, goodness. Well, I don't know if that uh, completely negated all of my progress, but I don't even know if I'm touching that game again. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, pardon me, I'll be right back.